Let me take for example myself. Uh, who has been, who's a person positively living with HIV for very many years? I'm a widow. Uh, I am getting a lot of, uh, I have a lot of admirers. They know, they have seen me, they have everything else. Do I take it now? Am I taken to court because uh, they know I'm my status and uh, yet they want us to go together? Is it a crime? Is it me? Who's pushing? Is that child born HIV positive by the mother? Was it, uh, was it done purposely? I think we need to reorganize and look into some of these things. And we need to see them from a completely different point of view. And I think we need to put the act so that uh, we do not push further for issues well, of HIV. My name is Patricia Serochin. I'm the vice chair of the International Community of Women with HIV, the Kenyan chapter. And I believe that uh, Section 26 of the Sexual Offences Act is not the right tool to be used uh, in terms of issues to deal with HIV. We have a law in place, the HAPCA, that deals with HIV in terms of prevention, issues of confidentiality and privacy. But it's also important that uh, science is with us now, that public health should conform to human rights, so that people with HIV are not stigmatized through the criminalization section. In the our efforts on going even for a test so that you can know your HIV status. We always complain, I want to know my HIV status. So how will you know your HIV status if the knowledge of your HIV status exposes you to prosecution somewhere? So these are some of the weaknesses that we have in, in, in this law, apart from the stigma that is, 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 uh, is spread. And for these reasons, I have no hesitation and I have signed the papers and I say I will stand with it. I thought I was going to be victimized when we stopped the president from taking some data and we got an injunction from the, from the court. Nothing happened to us. So this offense, not allegedly, but charged with this offense for allegedly putting the life of a police officer at a risk because the person, the person beat the thumb of the police officer while he was being arrested. The second person who, and you will not see their names on the court documents because of confidentiality, we are only using their initials uh, to prevent them from further stigma. The second person is uh, the case we talked about in Nakuru, where a lady was charged with deliberate infection for allegedly breastfeeding the neighbor's child. And then uh, our other petitioner is a woman living with HIV who has faced violence in a relationship because of this particular law, has been threatened by the spouse or the former spouse about using this law against her. And then we also have two other people, a discordant couple, uh, where one uh, is positive, the other one is negative, and they are talking about the dangers of this law and the fear they have about this particular law and what can happen to them. And then we also have Kellyn as an NGO coming in to talk about why this law is problematic. So eventually when we make the court documents available, you'll be able to see that is the case that is going forward using true examples of what has actually happened on the ground to be able to demonstrate to the court that we are not speaking about theoretical issues, we are actually speaking about practical issues where the law has been used, and as I said, as recently as two weeks ago in Mombasa, someone has been charged before the court alleging that he has deliberately infected his partner with HIV.